Well, hi everyone, this is Don Smith, and I would like to welcome you to this month's uh, Tip of the Month uh, video. And today I wanna show you something kind of cool where I went back to an old image of mine that I captured back in May of 2011 on the south shore of Lake Tahoe near sunset after the passing of two out of three freakish kind of snowstorms for that area and that time of year. Uh, usually that's starting to trend over into the summer months, but it was just a weird circumstances and these three cold storms blew through. And I can remember walking out behind my hotel, as I said, near sunset, um, and seeing these two trees, barren, obviously, and these two benches. Um, but there's a lot of things working against this image as a straight image. So what I wanted to do is over the years, I kept trying to figure out how could I process this image? I love the composition. I love the two trees and the two benches and the solitude and kind of the lingering light of the day look. I just never could figure it out. Then a couple months ago, I started playing around with texture overlays. Now, this isn't something by any means that I'm a expert at, but it's just kind of fun. And when I have some spare time, um, as I did this afternoon, I started playing around. I revisited this image again for probably about the seventh or eighth time, uh, this time with texture overlays in mind. So in this video, I want to show you how I went from this raw file and turned it into kind of a Monet-ish looking uh, painterly kind of picture that I thought was pretty cool. I mean, I, I brought my wife Barry in and I said, that's that, but that's that. And she just sort of went, woo. <laughs> so um, I got the idea that, you know what? I, I wanna share this little technique with you. It's really pretty easy. So let's dive in and get started. I know a lot of you have these types of pictures that, you know, they're not quite there almost, but uh, what can we do? So the first thing I want to do is I want to open up this image in Adobe Camera Raw. I'm in Photoshop. Now, if I came out of Lightroom with this, I could have opened this image as a smart object, and that might have been the better way to do it. But being that it was already in Photoshop, I'm just opening up Adobe Camera Raw. I want to check my histogram, make sure I got no blown highlights, no blown shadows. And I think we're pretty good with the exposure there. So the next thing I want to do is I want to open this up into Luminar 3. And if you've been following me for any time over the last couple of years, you know how strongly I feel about the products coming out of Skyline, especially Luminar 3. And today was just released uh, Luminar Flex. And the difference with that is that does, uh, that's just more of a, a filter that can work, a, a, you know, it, it doesn't open up as a standalone program is what I'm trying to say. It works as a third party filter, either through Lightroom or Photoshop. So uh, I'm just in the basic uh, module now of Luminar 3. I have it set by default to open up to professional, but I'm gonna clear out the workspace. I'm gonna add my filters catalog and come right here to one of my favorite filters, Accent AI for artificial intelligence. And we'll go ahead and close up the filter uh, palette there. And I'm just gonna take the boost slider. This is just a one slider filter, if you've never seen this before. And I'm gonna push it all the way to the right. And just in that quick little step, we've gone from that to that. Pretty dramatic in its own. But remember I said this was a image that was captured right around uh, sunset time. So I'm gonna come up to another favorite image of mine called Golden Hour, and I'm gonna click here, and I'm gonna take the amount, and I'm just gonna warm those clouds back up uh, somewhere in the range of 70 to 80 points. Yeah, right about in there looks pretty cool, 73, maybe a little bit more. And then I'm just gonna go ahead, uh, now that I'm happy with it, and I'm going to click Apply, and that's going to put me back out into uh, Photoshop. Now, before I move forward with the actual texture overlays, I want to do an image analysis, and I just think this cloud is a little too bright. There's a number of ways we can deal with this. 
I'm going to deal with this very quickly. It's not a way I expect you to know about, but if you do have the Tony Kuiper TK7 panel or any of his previous panels, um, this is pretty basic stuff. I'm just going to go in and create a lights um, mask, and you see anything that's white will get the effect, uh, which I'm going to add a, a curve adjustment layer here in just a moment and try to tame that down. Anything that's black will not get the effect. So we're going to go ahead and grab that curves adjustment layer. I'm just going to pull down right from the middle and you can see it's starting to darken down. If I pull down too much, we get this kind of uh, freakish solarization going on. So I don't want to do that. So just from the middle down, you can see I can really bend that curve. I can come down here to layer palette, turn the eyeball on and off. And I, I think I've got it under control, especially considering uh, we're going to add some uh, texture overlays to it now. So on its own, really, we've just gone from here to here, uh, just using the incredible Luminar 3. Pretty simple stuff, and I highly recommend it. But now comes uh, even something more fun that we can spice this image in. So before I work with a couple of textures that I've chosen today, I want to show you I'm working. There's a lot of companies out online that do uh, texture overlays. I happen to like the, the company Flypaper. And this is from a folder called Celestial Painterly. And today I'm going to work with AVR and I'm going to work with Cepheus, this one over here. And how do I pick these? You know, it's really kind of random. Um, AVR, I like that it was giving me some warmth in here and some darker edges. And Cepheus, when I opened it up, I had to orientate both of these into vertical orientation. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. And I flipped it around to get that dark spot to come over that hot spot of the sky. So let me, let me get out of here. So let's start with our first texture overlay, which is AVR. And it looks pretty cool. And you can see the brush strokes in here and the warmth and the greens. It's, it's, it is very much Monet. So Command or Control A to select, Command or Control C to copy. And I am going to come back over here to the picture, Command or Control V to paste. All right, if you look at my layer palette, it is now on applied as a layer to the background. So here's where the fun comes in. You come in here to your blend modes. By default, you're going to be at normal. But as you start cycling through these different blend modes, you get different effects. And I really recommend you just kind of go through all of these. Um, but to reach how I did this image, I started with a multiply. And the reason I chose that is I just loved what it did to that hot sky up there. Suddenly that sky has interest. But what it did do is it turned the entire image way too dark. So I'm going to come down here to my background and I'm going to add a curves adjustment layer and we're going to brighten up that picture. Now I have my curves adjustment set for quarter markings here, quarter grid lines. And I'm just simply going to take my cursor and I'm going to place it on the first quarter line up from the bottom and I'm going to push up to open up those shadows. Okay, so that's the first move I'm going to make on that curve. We turn it off, turn it on. Now I'm going to come up to the third line because I really want to kind of bring back that brightness of the sky, just not blown out. And this time I'm going to push up and you can see that it's pinned this section of the curve line right up to the top. That's okay. We turn this off turn it back on. Now look at the effect if I was to turn off the the actual uh, textured overlay. That's quite a radical adjustment. So you can see where I'm blowing out some areas. But when you temper it with a textured overlay, and we have this one in multiply mode, everything gets dialed right back in. So let's go to our second texture overlaid. This was the one that was horizontal, and I remember I told you you could do, you could flip it over to vertical. So you would do that by going clockwise on your image rotation. So come, if you're in Photoshop, go to image, image rotation, clockwise or counterclockwise, and you flip it around. I wanted this darker part to be up in the top right because that was going to paste over that sky section again. So again, Command or Control A to select, Command or Control C to copy. 
come back to our layer stack, command or control V, and there is Cepheus, uh, or Centaurus, excuse me, pasted in. Now this time, this is pretty cool. I'm just gonna start going through these. I really kind of love this when I hit one called Color Dodge, right there. Look at that. And when I tapped on that, I knew I had the image the way I wanted. So let's kind of review this. Let's, let's reopen the image. That was the dull raw that since May of 2011, I had no idea what I was gonna do with it. Thanks to Luminar 3, I could salvage that image. I still wasn't crazy about all the footsteps down here in the, in the snow. I would love to have that virgin snow. I still think that sky is too hot. Um, you know, and then we, we kind of tempered it down with a layer mask and kept working through it. And when we got to the end, we turned it into a painting. So it's really that simple. Um, I would recommend this highly to any of you because I, I know we all have those images that just don't quite cut it. This is just another fun little thing to throw in your bag of tricks um, when you're kind of taking an image that you like. This is one I actually will probably print. Um, I really like the effect of it that much. I'll let it sit with me for about a couple of days or, or a week and, and keep revisiting it. But I, I really have come to kind of like this picture. So that's how easy it is to work with texture overlays. If you get started, just work with one. Again, the key is changing that blend mode in layers and just have a blast with it. And um, I hope you really enjoyed this video. It's given you something else to think about in your photography to kind of spice things up and just keep the excitement and the passion going. So till next time, this is Don Smith. You take care.